All right. Welcome back to episode, I don't know what number, of the Kate and Jerry show. <laughs> good, good afternoon again, Jerry. Good yeah. afternoon. So today, Jerry, we were going to start talking a little bit about the payment models or the money math behind, particularly revenue, we talked about the revenue, behind practices. Now, sitting this side of the pond, I have struggled, as I think many people have here, to understand how on earth does the American healthcare system work? And it's quite interesting because about a year, maybe two years ago, I did ask a spinal surgeon, a US-based spinal surgeon, I said, how does it work? He said, I don't know. I thought, okay, well, if you don't know, then <laughs> he's never near retirement, then heaven help us all. Um, and what I keep seeing when I look on social media are people promoting that they're cash based or that they're insurance based or they're in network or out of network. And I'm not sure I understand what all this lingo means. Can you explain, Jerry, how practices, uh, where the revenue comes from for practices in the US? You know, I'm going to answer this high level. And at the basic, the revenue comes from the same damn place that every other business on the face of the earth revenues comes from their customers. And this disconnect is, as you just dove into, is so insane in U.S. healthcare. And so we've confused what running a business is, back to the business basics, with payer models. So I was on a podcast a week ago, and I use the example with non-healthcare people, which I love because they always look at you and go, what the fuck with healthcare? What, do, what are you guys doing, right? What are you doing inside of healthcare? And I said, we're building a world based around payer models and not the people we serve. If I sat in a room with five other entrepreneurs, sorry, four entrepreneurs and me, and we went around the room and everybody was asked to describe their businesses in three sentences. You get around the room. Um, I have a home painting business, right? We specialize with rentals. Oh, how long you had that? Oh, four or five years. How many employees? Cool. And you go around the room and you'd hear that from everybody. And then you'd get to the the phys physiotherapist who has a private practice and they go, I have a cash physical therapy office and everybody in the group would go, no fucking shit. So do we, so that's not your bit. How does that describe your business? Right? The other people go around the room, they tell you who they serve and they tell you how they serve them. Right? Oh, I have a cash physical therapy mobile practice that serves runners. Well, okay, 90% of what you just said doesn't matter. And so we, we have confused this payer model. And what we do, what we do, let me, sorry, I just want one more thing, is we establish and build a business lacking the basics around a payer model instead of the people we serve. So, Jerry, can I just confirm, and I might be sounding very naive and very innocent and whatever, or stupid, ignorant, whatever, but anyway, let's get this right. Are people really promoting that my business is a cash-based business? Because if I've got back pain or knee pain, right now, what I care about is that you can fix me. If my son's just broken his ankle or sprained his ankle, I care that you can just fix that. My mum's hips hurting. I care that you can fix that. We'll deal with the payment model secondarily. Right. What I care about is you are, I don't, you are the expert, you are the best person available to me to solve mine or my family's, my loved one's problems. Yeah, I, I've seen, I've seen the example, by the way, I'm not bashing on cash practices, people, I'm not bashing on any payer model, because everybody does it, I did it, right? I have an in network practice, I have an out of network practice, I have a cash practice, I have a Medicare practice, it doesn't matter back to what Kate said, until you understand who you're serving. So yes, Kate, when you go to some of those websites, it says, right, we're a cash only, you know, and I'm like, Oh, my God. And then everybody argues, well, I want to be transparent. Well, you were just transparent that you have no idea who you're serving, but you know how you want to get paid. Yeah, that doesn't help me understand that you're gonna give me 
you well all it says to me is you're more about the money than you are about making sure you solve my back pain or my shoulder pain or my mum son's whoever's problem so let, let's go back to this that's awesome so i advertise i'm a cash pt kate lands on your site and says all you care about is the money you advertise at the top of your physical therapy website that you take all insurances. And that's the first thing and only thing you see. And so Kate lands there and goes, they serve insurance people. Again, neither one of these have anything to do with the person you're going to serve with your services. And if you built it around that, it's a huge mistake. And by the way, this is the biggest tell. And I'm going to start doing this more. I'm going to start doing it live. So I do secret callers, right, Kate? I call clinics and say, hi, my name is Jerry. I have low back pain. I want to get scheduled for physical therapy. What happens next is the biggest cluster, you know what, of everything. I can tell you what 80 to 90% of the people are going to do. They're going to go straight to, great, I can help you. What's your insurance? And I'm like, again, people... I call a restaurant to make a reservation. Hi, my name's Jerry. I want to make a reservation. Great. How are you going to pay for dinner? I go to a shoe store. I go to walk in the door. They stop me and tell me, how are you going to pay? Well, can I use my credit card? No, we only take cash. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Even if they only took cash. I live in Philadelphia, a boatload of cash only businesses. And you know, when you find that out is when you pull out your credit card to pay and they say, sorry, we only take cash. There's the ATM machine. By the way, it doesn't change whether I go back to that restaurant or not. It has no implication on whether I go back to that restaurant or not. It has zero implication on whether I go back to that restaurant or not. It's all about value. It's all about what was delivered. How was my experience, right? The business basics. This is, as I get older and as I spend more time in this profession, this has become more and more baffling to me. And I'll also say this out loud and to the public that most of the large physiotherapy providers in this country have been businesses that are built around payer model. So the customer they're serving is the billing company, is the insurance company. Yes, because you very much use this word reimbursement. Yeah. And you look at the definition of reimbursement, it's to give back money that's already been spent so again you're like well are you actually a business because if you're dependent if your revenue is dependent on reimbursement you're not actually a business i don't believe jerry i think you're kind of just a well you are a business you're a billing business you're an insurance billing business you're a cost center for an insurance company yeah and if you also then can't confidently demonstrate the effectiveness of your service then you really are just an overhead that is vulnerable to being cut. And in all likelihood, you have a handful of customers, these insurance companies, I don't know how many people, let's say typically five insurance companies you might serve that deal with the majority of, you know, bring in the majority of revenue. But if you're dependent on them reimbursing you for costs you have incurred on their behalf. Yeah. How, and you build the business around that, Kate. And you can't prove also your effectiveness. So you essentially are a liability. You are an overhead to that insurance company that they could cut any moment. You're on sticky ground. I think I would much rather have a one, two, three man practice serving the runners of Philadelphia who want to be able to do, I don't know, what's the marathon, Boston Marathon. How far is Philadelphia from Boston? That might not be right. It's four hours, but but it's close enough. Everybody yeah. does it. Everybody wants to go to the Boston Marathon. So yeah. That's a so I think I'd far rather have a very niche small practice where there's plenty of runners in Philadelphia that want to do the Boston Marathon or whatever it is and just deal with them rather than deal with the four or five insurance companies that could pull the rug out from under my feet any moment. So let's do this. I want to take a pause here. I want everybody to think about what they just heard. I guess Kate's not wrong. Nothing we've said to this point is wrong. It's a choice. Mm. So Kate just said, if I understand the business better, I just made a choice to create something built on business basics with my creativity and my personalization, because I'm going to go the next step and go, if you do what Kate just did, I'm going to serve runners who want to run big races. I'm going to have three providers and you run all the numbers and you figure out your expenses, then you understand the price you need to receive. At that point, 
you could run as many different scenarios as you want. Because what you could do here, Kate, and most of my clients do, is they choose the insurances they want to do business with based on their business model, the practice model, the delivery model, the expenses they need, the life they want, the amount they want to pay their team, the amount they want to profit. Then they go back and look at price. And there will be insurances that pay close to that or above that. And they'll go, okay, we'll take three, three insurances, none of these others, and the rest of the people will pay out of pocket. I don't want anybody, we're not, we're not, right? Kate just made a decision based on her thinking and how she would want to manage a business based on the business basics and came to a conclusion. Now she's going to run the numbers. She's going to look at what works. Someone may come in and go, Kate, this insurance pays us $50 more a visit than what we're getting from the other people. Oh, cool. That's something we can consider then. But it was built around the, the business basics and the business and the creativity you put into it. Mm. So I'm listening. I'm kind of thinking that if you, this is my perception, if you are very much going the insurance route, one of the things you've got to do to secure that, because you are a cost center to the insurance company and they are going to be looking at minimizing their overheads, they're going to know their numbers better than you. You've got to make sure to mitigate risk that you can pr prove your effectiveness if ever required. You've got to be able to demonstrate that you can predictably deliver a result at a predictable price, which you should be able to do anyway, but even more important if you're dependent on a handful of insurance companies that could just decide they're cutting physiotherapy as a, as a offer to their clients overnight. So what happens in the States, Kate, based on everything you just said, I'm going to open up practice in my home city. I'm going to serve people with low back pain and I'm going to take insurance. And I'm like, what was that based on? Well, nobody wants to pay for physical therapy or it's too expensive. And I'm like, holy fuck, here we go. Right. So that is the, that is the majority of people starting practices. And by the way, I would argue still in practice, the biggest pushback I get with telling people, you know, you're losing money here, or you're doing a lot of work for this. Why don't we go out of network with this one payer and leave the rest in network? Because this one's paying you such a small amount. And the pushback I'll get from someone who's been running a business 10 years is, well, nobody's going to pay. And because my nobody's response buying is, nobody's buying physiotherapy. <laughs> yeah. And then that's my question. What have you been selling? Pay yeah. for what? And they'll go for physical therapy. And I'll go, you're a hundred percent right. You don't sell physical. So again, there are no business basics and they'll tell you nobody will pay for it. Yeah. So what this, we need, this to is, this is the physio life in America in 2023. Yeah, it's not too different here. And so then, it's the same issues. then we'll go and network and we'll blame the insurance company for all our woes. <laughs> That's where the uh, cash PT sprung up. That's where the out of network coaching. That's where the take back your life came back. It was like, take back your life, learn business, learn the business yeah. basics, learn the yeah. basics. By the way, I don't have to be a physics major or an engineering major to have someone help me build my house. Sorry, to build my house. There are experts out there who do that. And no, I'm not pitching my services. I'm telling you, that's it. And if you don't understand that, you have, get ready, sit down. You have absolutely no right to start something. If you don't know who you're serving, if you don't know what their journey is going to look like in your business, and if you don't know the experience you want to create for them from start to finish, then I'm going to say out loud, you have no right starting anything. And I'm going to tell you, there are people out there been doing this for five, 10, 15 years that can't answer those three fucking things. And again, we're back to, they created a billing company. Oh, we yeah. were a physical therapy company. I went, oops, you got that backwards. You're a billing company that bills for physical therapy that happens to treat people who want physical therapy. Right. 
guys, you can do better than this. And that's what we're going to help you with. So the next two sessions, yeah, I, I think, see, Joe... I'll stay, I'll stay in the muck on this. And right, <laughs> and let's just back up because everything we've said prior to this is how you avoid all this. And this is why I get frustrated because the information is out there and there are people out there who can help you in this day and age of technology and searching. You have no excuse for not doing this work of creating something that reflects your vision. We're here for it. I'm here for all of it. I want more of it. Right. Next week, Joey, we're going to talk about what people are actually buying. And then the week after that, we're going to help you not price like a plumber. <laughs> Even though plumbers make lots of money, we'll help you price like a physical therapist serving your community who gets paid a fair amount. I love it because I'm like, oh, wait, I just paid a plumber a lot of money. No, I love it. I love it. But, but this is true. And I've got, I want you guys to hear what Kate said, right? You don't have to do this. This is the thing. And we're going to tell you in the next episode. All right. Thanks, Kate. Thanks for keeping me under control. Kind of. <laughs> Take care. See you next week, Jerry.